a little while ago, I issued a challenge to you guys on taking something I coded up and I wanted to see the fun things you could do with it, just playing around with the CSS. And I've, it's been amazing looking at the results. We've effectively had one element to play with. You had one span and you could do what you wanted to it. And you guys did amazing things with it. You had nice, cool, spinning, fun, awesome animations. We had some timing functions. We had some keyframes. There was really creative use of borders, of gradients, of other things to make some really cool looking stuff to make some actual hamburgers with just one element. Really, really fun. Really, really cool. I was really impressed. And one of the most fun things about this is seeing how other people approach the same type of problem because you're going to see there's several people did arrows but they all did arrows in different ways and it sort of opens your mind a little bit in the fun and the creativity that CSS opens up to all of us. It, it is one of those problems where there's maybe several different ways to pull off the same thing but it also means we can be creative with what we're doing. Let's go and see all of this creativity because really really it was so much fun for me to look at and go through all of these things that you guys did. We have a whole bunch to get through, but um, I was originally going to be grouping these by similarity because there's a f there's similar ideas that are used a few times or a few people had similar ideas. But then the other issue was a few people submitted more than one and I didn't really know the best way to tackle that. So I've just said, you know what, let's just take this in the order that I put them into my spreadsheet and that's what we have here. So this is the first one. It is by Tim Wrinkle. Um, also just really big um, before <laughs> before we go any further into this, a big apology if I mispronounce your names. So if it's a name I'm not familiar with or even if it is one I am familiar with, I may, I may just mispronounce it. So I apologize ahead of time if I do. So Tim here made this. Uh, his, <laughs> um, his comment was who doesn't want to add a little bit of who doesn't want to add a little bit of ketchup to their hamburger. So uh, when we click that, it opens up the hamburger and he's added some ketchup. Let's just zoom in on that uh, so we can see it. Uh, I guess I zoomed in too much. So there you go. Uh, we can see there is a bit of ketchup that is on there. If we come and take a look at the CSS, he's used a custom property to set for the color of the ketchup, which is awesome. And he's used a gradient to set the color on there. So we have the ketchup color going to 40% and then the dark going to the rest of it. And it is a gradient, but he's done it in the nice way where you can get a straight line sort of transition between two car two colors uh, just like that. So that is a nice fun look at a little thing we can do. Obviously this one's playing around a little bit more. Some of them are more like this that are more takes on the hamburger itself. You can see it's made to look like a hamburger instead of just being three black lines. Um, some of them take it even more literally than that. And other ones do a bit more of, um, you know, like a tackle like this one here by Riza Khan where it's a bit more of the traditional one, except he's played a little bit with the animation that's going on or the transition we have there. Uh, you can see it's a little fun transition that's going back and forth. So if we come and take a look at the CSS here and I go all the way down, he's actually done it with a keyframes, which is really, really cool. So he has the boomerang in, uh, list in and he's done another one for the hamburger itself. So that's why their animation is a little bit different for each one. And then I'm guessing, Yep, here we go. Uh, when the nav close or nav open is put on there. Oh, so we have a nav close and a nav open. Um, he's running it to run the animation forwards. Uh, he is moving, uh, he is running it. So here we have a boomerang out and the hamburger, the boomerang list out and the boomerang hamburger out. And then he has a separate animation for the in. So that is nice and fun. Thank you very much for your submission, Riza. Uh, on the next one, Riza, Riza, I'm guessing it's Riza. Here we have one by Vipin Misha. And let's go take a look at it. And it's just a nice little, ooh. Um, so there you can see it's playing with the, the animation on there itself just to overextend it and then make it come back just a little bit. Um, so it's like it spins so fast and then I think he's changed that little in and out. So this is the type of thing you'd actually see on a real site um, as it, or even the last one was probably a bit of an extreme example, but it might be something. But this is something you might actually find where uh, we're playing around a little bit with the actual um, animation. Actually, for all of these, the link to them will be down in the description below. So there, it's a numbered list with all of the ones in the order I've gone. So if you do want to check out the code pen itself in more detail because you really like the animation or you want to see how they did it, uh, more than what I'm doing in this video by all you know, you can go and check that out um, So I do think that is fun It's a nice little way just to keep it almost like a more realistic um, Animation where you can't just stop, you know, you go a little bit past and you come back a little bit My guess is it was with a cubic bezier uh, Let's go take a look there we go. Uh, so he's here. We can see what he's done is he's taken out the, the transitions that I did and he changed it to have a cubic bezier that goes beyond 
the the finish point. So whenever you see a cubic bezier, if you see it, the number is beyond one. Um, it pretty much means that at one point, the the animation will go past the ending point and then have to come back and settle down. So it's just really related to where the arms are getting pulled to. Um, I'm not going to dive too deep into it in this video, but just if you see a number bigger than one, it always means that it's doing like going beyond its finish point and then has to settle back down like we can see going on right there. So that's what is happening with that. Next up, we have Vlasis. Um, so here on uh, this one is actually submitted by email. You can see he's built this into a hamburger and he's done it without adding any HTML. This is all done with just one single span, which is so much fun. And it won't be the only hamburger entry. You can see now actually when we click on that, it sort of flattens out and then on flattens out. Um, I know that he said, actually, hmm. That's funny. I was looking at it with Chrome, and we're in Chrome now, uh, and it looked different <laughs> than it does now, but I was on a Mac, and now I'm on my Windows computer, and it does look a little bit different, so that's really interesting, where it was all red in the middle before, I'm pretty sure, and he, in his email, he'd mentioned to me that he had some issues with browser, the um, consistency between browsers. So I'm wondering if that's maybe a little bit of what's happening. And I'm pretty sure everything in this one's happening with linear gradients once again. Uh, sorry, it took me a little while to find it. I, I went right past it. So um, we can see here we have the hamburger itself. But then on the before, we have a clip path. Awesome use of clip path here, um, which is giving us the shape of what we can see there. So it just has the background color on it. But then using um, clip path, and actually let's just, let's take off the clip path because I'm not sure be honest what there it is that's the big yellow thing so that's that's what I thought it was <laughs> but I wanted to make sure uh, so you can see that the clip path is giving us that shape and then on the after as well we have a clip path on there and not only are we using clip paths on these to give us a bit of the shape of them but there's also a nice use of uh, borders um, I'm just trying to look oh here we go here's we have the border top and a border bottom and there is some playing around border radiuses um, as well to give us the shape of everything that's happening on some of these as well. So that's why we're able to have all of the different colors in here. Uh, you know, we have a top, we have a bottom, or the, you know, the opening closing buns, we have the cheese that's melting over, we have the hamburger itself, we have some, con or, you know, lettuce or relish and ketchup or tomato or whatever it is. We have all that stuff going on with one single span. Love stuff like this. So creative, so much fun. Thank you so much for your entry. Next up, we have Jason Levine, or Levine. I'm guessing it's Levine, um, where you can just see it's a nice little change, actually. Hmm, curious. My navigation's not opening anymore, so <laughs> maybe he played around with a little bit of... I'm not sure what. Not sure what happened there, but that's all good, because we were just focused on this anyway. Where, actually, I really like the animation here a lot better than the original one that I did. Um, it's a really simple one. And I remember he mentioned that it was a simple one um, where it's just, it's rotating. Instead of one of them just having the opacity disappear on it, um, they're both rotating, but it's making them line up on top of each other. So the two pseudo elements are lining up on top of each other and to make one of the lines in the X. So you can see that one of them's rotating, um, at, you know, they're rotating together and then moving in position to be on top of each other. I think that looks a little bit more elegant than the original one uh, that I took a look at doing. So I really like that. And um, I guess he didn't like the simplicity of that. So he did, Jason did submit the second one with a nice little dancing icon there. And this one, menu opens. Hmm. So I don't know what happened there, but uh, as long, you know, we get the same sort of animation going on when it's open, but when it's closed, we get the little dancing animation uh, happening there. Now, if I really like this dancing animation, I'm pretty sure it was done with some keyframes because it just keeps going on forever. So let's go take a look. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping it was that. So we have keyframes. Now to get them all doing it, you can see that they're all doing the same thing. It's just, we have a different animation duration. <laughs> I always get mixed up if that's duration, but one of them does seem, yeah, the speeds on them do look different. Um, so they bounce around at different speeds because uh, if this was just the same two seconds on all of them, we would see that they're all going to be moving at the same speed. Uh, so they're all just moving together. Now, one thing you could do is you could do that and then give them like a 0.5 second and say a point, or I'll just do one second. It's gonna be too much of a delay. Um, but that's going to actually get them to be off from one another, but all going and dancing still, uh, because what this is doing is it's adding a delay. So the first one was the speed. So by having different speeds, they're dancing, but you could also do this where there's a bit of a delay. The only disadvantage with that is 
at the very beginning, they're going to start, you know, they'll stagger start, but then once it starts, they keep going. Now, if this was a real site, I probably wouldn't want it always dancing like that because it is a little bit distracting, but it could be a really awesome hover. Um, so while you're hovering, you have that come in, starts dancing around. If you stop hovering, it goes away. So it sort of adds to the idea that it's an interactive element. It's moving around. It's doing something. You click, and when we click, we can still have it go to something like that and then disappear back and go back to how it was. But still... Yeah, really, really fun. I really, really like it. So awesome. Thank you for both entries, Jason. Really good stuff. Here we have a submission from Martin Langenberg, who, Langenberg, uh, who also had two submissions. Let's see this first one here, where, isn't that cool? <laughs> it's like this, the middle line is what's turning into the X, which, to be fair, I actually don't know how he did that. <laughs> Just looking at it quickly, I'm not sure what, what he did to pull that off, because we're still keeping the line on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to investigate to see... The only thing I can think of is he turned off the pseudo elements and that line on the top and bottom are actually borders because I don't know if there's another way to do that, <laughs> uh, which would be on my hamburger itself. Yeah, there we go. So he has a border top and a border bottom. So here, instead of using pseudo elements, the top line and the bottom line are now borders. And then when we click, the border changes. So if we go and look down here, the nav opened, the border has changed, and he's added the border radius to give it the shape on there. And then he's crossing, um, he's using a, one or both pseudo elements. He might only be needing one of the pseudo elements. Oh, he's using SAS too, very nice. Uh, do, do, do. Or he kept, they're both, yeah, they both have the same thing on it. So they're just, one of them is still my line, and then the other one is crossing the other way. Am I right? Am I right? Oh no, when it's open, the middle... Oh, that's both pseudo elements are lined up on top of each other right now. When we click, they turn into the X. I sort of screwed things up a little just now. There we go. Um, I was trying to experiment. So the middle, the line in the middle is actually the pseudo elements from the very beginning. Haha. <laughs> okay, cool. And then when we... Um, there we go. So the line in the middle is both pseudo elements overlapping, which turn into an X, and then the top and the bottom are created by the borders. Really fun, creative solution there. So thank you. There's a challenge entry one from Martin, and the second one will be this one here. Let's see. Um, so a little bit similar, but this is more, I think, maybe something you'd actually find. The other one made me think more of a hamburger, just with the shape of the bar, uh, the borders when it we clicked on it. Um, whereas this one, it looks like something you might see on a real site. It's kind of fun. It merges together and then comes out to make our X and also changes color. Now, I do want to look at the color change really fast to see because there's different ways you could do it. Uh, there you go. He's just changing the color there. Okay, so there we go. Um, the border colors on everything are changing or getting set and we have that so where there's no border or actually once again I have a feeling he used his borders Yeah, he did uh, Hamburger Oh, no, there was no borders. So he was using the pseudo elements like we'd used them before How I originally had them set up Yep Top bottom. Yeah, okay So he did it the same way I'd originally did here where we're just looking at pseudo elements and then it smushes down um, and you can see there's transitions on a bunch of things here. So we're transitioning the height and stuff like that to make this one work. But that is a fun little animation. I really think it is a cute, um, it's a nice little unexpected behavior that works really, really well. So awesome. Thank you very much, Martin. That says entry number three. I don't think I saw entry number two. Did I miss one of them? Oh, you know what? I think I did. Ha, there was three. So we skipped number two. That was number three. And now we're into number two. <laughs> Um, oh, and this one's sort of similar. It's squishing down, but then we're just doing a spin animation instead with the color changing. So no fancy stuff with the borders on that one. Awesome. Really, really cool. Um, that type of spin, I was expecting more people to do something like that. I did it just with like a, a, like one little turn on it. I'm doing it with my hands now, like you can see me, but you can't see me. So it's, yeah. Um, but this like fast spinning thing is a really common type of thing you'll see it in a way actually here they merge and then it moves out and spins so there's a nice little delay there so it can merge before the movement but a lot of the time you'll get these faster spinning things I almost feel like sometimes it's to hide a little jankiness in the animation because it's like spinning around you can sort of get away with lowering the opacity on something or hiding something or moving something that didn't look so good otherwise but it also does create this nice effect where it like spins and especially here where it spins quickly and then slows down into its final spot i think that looks really nice so thank you for your three submissions martin awesome 
Um, here we have one from Janice. This is where uh, Janice going. <laughs> I'm going to say going. I'm, I don't know how to pronounce O's with umlauts on them. I'm sorry. Uh, so let's take a look. And Oh, this is one of the arrow submissions. Oh, this one's fun because we get a nice little hover effect coming on it too where the arrow moves over and we hover. So a few people, we're going to see a few more arrows along the way. So I'll, I'll explore a little bit of, well, I mean, basically, I think it's nothing too complicated, but it's a fun little thing. So let's just go take a look fast um, to see how we did it. Um, so for this to move back and forth, you can see right here already has a hover effect set up where there's just a, the rotate is there and there's a translate X. So the translate X is moving it over. Uh, normally we have our hamburger on the nav opened where the transforms just the rotate. So the rotate and then we're adding the translate X to that transform to get it to move when we hover. And I just want to see position right. So the before translate translate Y. So he's using his translates on that just to get them in the right position and then the rotation. Um, and we've changed the width here. So if the width wasn't whoops, I did too much. If the width wasn't at 50%, that's where it's going to like stick off and it looks absolutely crazy. But by sticking the width on there, that's what's shrinking it down to help make our arrow there. So nice fun one right there where we get the little arrow and you know, it lets us know we can close it that way. So instead of being an X, we get an arrow to let us know another way to hide it. So fun. I also like how it spins into the arrow and then spins back. So really cool. Thank you very much, Janice. Next up we have Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Bostler. Oh, I like this one. I like the merging sort of, it makes me think of back in the day with Flash when we can make like these tweening animations. Um, this type of thing just makes me think of a tween, the way it's going back and forth. It's that type of tweening look that you'd get back in those days when you just had like two shapes that would merge from one shape into the other. A lot of you are probably watching this going, what, Flash, what was that? <laughs> but uh, yeah, back in the day, that was how we made websites. I didn't do very much with Flash, to be honest, but I did play around with it a bit. Um, so yeah, I think that's a fun little thing that's going on there. So they're switching colors, they're getting a background, and I'm guessing there's a border radius coming in on that at the same time. Nav open, border radius 50%, makes it into a circle, and then we get the colors changing into the light. So it's giving us the shape and it's making, you know, even if they were extending out, they're the same color as that, so it wouldn't matter. Um, but they're probably stuck with inside that border radius anyway. So, we, you know, let's just find out. Would they be stuck in there no matter what? Yeah, so even even if, you know, you can see there's they're still stuck in there and there's an opacity change. Opacity 0.5, that's why it's getting sort of gray instead of a really dark color. So really, really fun. Thank you very much, Bobby. Next up, we have a Remco Spans. Not going to try again. Oh, I have Bobby's open here twice. I was like, oh, they had the same idea. Uh, so here's Remco's. Uh, so oh, here's another one of the arrow ones. Now, it's the same idea, but you can see the animation on it's a little bit different than the other. I do like the color change on there. Um, so instead of spinning it around at the same, like as it turns into the arrow here, we just have the top and the bottom sort of switching position and turning into that shape. Now, I do see one thing. Um, I'm going to slow the animation down a lot on this one. Um, so where's my transition? Let's make this like two seconds because I want to look at how this is happening. So, it's, oh, there we go. So we can see it diving in and then we see them diving out like that. Um, and now woof, it's kind of cool when you see it in slow motion. It's like when you, when you watch, uh, I, sh I should... It's kind of weird that the menu's still jumping out, but it does let us look at it. It makes me think of like uh, when you're watching some, like something underwater, like, <laughs> you know, you're expecting it to go faster and it's just like, oh, there we go. Um, I'm wondering, and I don't know if this is going to work or not, but if we changed um, the transform, transform origin to be left, no, right, right. I'm just wondering, it's breaking it a little bit. It doesn't really do what I thought it would do either. Hmm. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, I was just thinking because of the way they're moving when it's going really fast, so it was at 350 milliseconds originally. Um, so when it's happening fast like that, there's that one part before they merge in. If they were just to rotate instead of having to do that like sliding thing, it might look a little bit cleaner instead of it almost looks like they hop a little bit uh, when we do it. But, or you know what it might be? 
um, my because my transitions only on the transform um, that could be it's doing that but it's not transforming the width so if we did something like that but we also added um, the width in here let's just see what happens width I don't know if he even did that with width to be honest I'm guessing uh, before bottom height left width yeah he is doing the width so let's just see I just broke my transform completely by doing that why oh you, did that br does that break everything so it's it's that didn't have the effect that I wanted it to have <laughs> exactly um, I would have to play with that to it's it's different now but it's not doing what I thought it would do um, but I do like the idea once again of the arrow coming into there yeah it's a nice fun one so I do like that so thank you very much Remco let's go to the next one so after Remco we have Katie so Katie has three and let's start with the first two and um, so we're actually going to see there's going to be another similar one to this. I sort of like this. Um, I like the idea of this like it's sliding across. It gets hidden, but then it like pops back out. So it sort of attracts your attention back to it. Oh, she changed my focus too. <laughs> um, let's just go. Oh, and look at this. She even made it work better. Allow the toggle to work if the tab key is used to access the menu. Because nav focus at event listener. Nav toggle. Oh, because she has a nav focus? What's the nav focus? On the link itself. Hmm. Ah. Ah, look at that. Because let's say we're here and we tab over and then I hit tab. You can still see what we're doing. What if I take that off? Is that not what happened? Ooh, I might like that. Is she increasing the accessibility of my site? Ha, huh. so okay, so you can see here um, what that's done. <laughs> yeah, that was really important. So let's close that <laughs> so it's hiding away. Um, if I click this, it opens my navigation, and if I click that, it closes. If I tab and then tab again, because it was set to overflow none, it's moving that into view, and I'm actually losing part of my site, and I can't get back to that. Um, it's sort of gone until I close my menu and then close my menu. So by her adding this on here, what's happened is if we hit tab and then tab again, it's actually, let's do that, tab, tab. It's entering into the nav open state uh, instead of having, um, you know, instead of, and then we can even get out of it by it losing focus. So if I go like that and I lose focus, my whole site, it, you know, it's going back um, tab tab and then I shift tab out oh no if it loses focus it doesn't close that's okay we'd it'd have to be more complicated than that basically uh, it's fixed uh, an issue I had with my accessibility so thank you very much for that I'm happy I noticed the comment because when I was looking through this earlier I didn't see that um, so that's really really cool thank you for that Katie uh, so we learned something new e without even looking at the hamburger menu just on making sure that it works everything works properly so, um, so and then we have the hover here but that's only if it's nav open let's just go take a look um, so you can see that we have like a, a hover, it's changing, so it's sort of highlighting for that, so that's good. Um, so I, what I was saying a long time ago before I noticed that extra JavaScript in there was uh, I sort of like that it's gone and then it comes in. So it just sort of reminds us that the menu is there, it was tucked away, it's coming in. It's a fun little animation. I really think that's a, a cute way to do it, where the button is moving over along with everything else. Um, from a design perspective, I'd almost prefer if, if this was a circle. And then it stayed a circle over here or something like that. Just because there's no circles anywhere. I have a square. I sort of have a square. I maybe shouldn't have even done rounded corners on that. Um, and then we have a pure circle. But that's I'm really being nitpicky on that. That's my designer coming out in me. <laughs> uh, if there was more circles everywhere, I think I'd be liking this more. Um, but I really like the idea of it sliding over and then hiding away and popping back out. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, Katie's next one is where she went this really cool route with the shadow. I really like this. Um, so she does a really creative use of shadows here. Um, so here it's sticking out into our site and then it takes the opposite role and it's sinking into our navigation. So I think that's kind of neat. Um, and using some inset shadows and some shadows and this here, um, there is one way to break this that I discovered. Let's change my view for a second. And let's go really short and whoops. <laughs> the, um, so you can, but I like that I can do this because I can highlight more of how it was actually done by doing this. 
Um, so basically on the ham nav opened, ba -ba -ba, background is, here we go, we have a box shadow on there. So if I turn off that box shadow, and let's open her back up again. Uh, oh, that's on there. Um, so I'm gonna come onto my nav, uh, open nav toggle, and you can see that she has a box shadow on there. So if we turn off that box shadow, um, it gets rid of that so it doesn't look like it's underneath this anymore. So if we put that one back on, now it's looking like it's like chunked out. So that's what the inset shadow is doing there. So I think that's a nice one. Um, and added to adjust the box shadow effects. Is this the other one? Let's just turn all this off. Um, yeah, there we go. So there it's sort of blended into the rest of it. Because uh, I guess, let's just go take a look. Yeah, you can sort of see that um, we're getting this weirdness that's happening here. So she played around with a whole bunch with some extra shadows on there just to make sure that it blended in properly with the original effect. So it sort of gave it some softer edges that stopped it from looking really, really awkward. So really fun on that one. And her last one. Let's leave here and on to the last, but definitely not least. Um, so here we have my hamburger, but I'm going to push tab. I'm going to hover on top and whoop. I have an actual hamburger. <laughs> so this is a little bit similar to one of the earlier ones we saw. I apologize, I don't remember whose it was. Um, so, but this is on hover. We can see it's switching from my three lines into an actual hamburger. Uh, and if I click on it, it turns into french fries with ketchup on it. <laughs> so that's really cool and really fun. Once again, it's a good use of, um, if we come and take a quick look, uh, customize your burger. So we can cheese, the meat, the bun, the topping. So continuing with the custom properties that I'd originally set up so we could change the color of stuff. Um, and then, so that's customizing our colors that we're seeing right there. Now to get all of this to work, let's go take a look. So here we have our original hamburger that's all set up with, she added the transitions to get all of that to pop out and pop back in. Uh, this has more or less stayed the same, I think, but where it gets more interesting then is if the nav is opened, so this is what's doing the french fries. So here's our french fry setup. So basically on the french fry, it's pretty simple. Uh, she switched the colors of things a little bit, except for one of them, uh, that's my hover effects. So one of these, I don't know what colors these are, but one of them, we have one line here is one french fry. So this is probably one of the french fries. This is my other french fry. And then this one here is the ketchup that's on the end. Uh, do we have, yeah, and with the width of 10 pixels, that would make sense. So that's one of the pseudo elements is turning into the ketchup instead of hiding it away. Then we have the two there, which probably, so she has the color and then she's added sort of a shadow to it. She could have done it with a box shadow too, probably. Um, but here just with a little skinny border bottom to give it the two tone effect that we see going on. So that's really cool. And then for the hamburger effect itself, like this one here, um, very similar, I think. Linear gradients, border bottoms going on uh, with everything. So getting all of this going on just with some clever use of uh, border radiuses. With some clever use of border radiuses, some different colors on it and extra borders changing background colors and adding a few borders to get the stuff going on and you get this cool little hamburger and bun happening. So thank you very much for Katie. Some three very creative uh, submissions there. So thank you for that. Next up, we have David Betts. So David uh, came up with this one. It's another arrow submission. So this one though has a hover effect to make our arrows go that way. And that's a little bit actually, um, going this way is working better than going that way. We'll see if we can fix that. Uh, Cause that's a little bit, you see when I go that way, it just sort of moves them into the arrow position. But when we go the other way, it's sort of hopping a little bit. So we'll see if we can switch that. Um, oh, and then the arrow flips around. Oh, I really like that. I think I love how that's happening, but it's happening too fast. <laughs> um, so this is where I said you could change anything you want in the CSS, uh, which even though I had my comment saying change stuff below this, but uh, a few of you did come up and change other things. So the transform here, oh, maybe this was changed. I'm gonna just say all, cause it's gonna make my life a lot easier. Of uh, one second and ease in, out. Um, and let's just, so that's gonna go really slow. So you see how like, oh, that already looks better. So there it's also the width that's transforming. So you can see that it's turning into an arrow. We're gonna see how that worked and why it worked a bit different from the other one we were looking at. So we can see it moves into the arrow. Then, see there, I love that the transition, not here, but the transition from, whoops, the hover 
to when it opens up and it sort of just flip sides. I think that's so much fun uh, where the middle line is staying the same. So we're not rotating it. We're just sort of transitioning from one spot to the other. Um, so for we have the width that is being changed on them. And oh, here we're changing the left position. And by changing and then the left, because the left is changing on them, instead of using a transform, I think it's just acting a little bit differently. Now, the transitions and transforms do animate better than if you're using left and right and you're transitioning left and right properties or top, bottom, all of those. Uh, but in a case like this, we're having some fun. And I think that's really fun. Again, I really like from here and then like that when you switch over like that. And one thing I definitely say is like, I love the look of it. Maybe it was one of those happy accidents uh, that just sort of it happened to do that. Uh, but if you run into something like that, play maybe with your transitions on different things. I put it to all. Don't transition all. Transition the properties you want to transition. And again, you can do them at, and you can do them at different speeds. So maybe you want certain ones to be transitioning faster than others. So you could definitely play around with that a little bit to get that. Like, because I think I, I made it too slow now. Because that's way too slow. But that, where it flips over, I think it actually works almost at this speed. Maybe it could be a little bit faster, but that 300 milliseconds or whatever we had originally, it went in a blink of an eye, and then we didn't really see it. But, you know, so you lose a little bit of that. And it's one of those little happy things that somebody sees. They're like, oh, that was cool. And they keep using the site. It was just this little detail, um, but it can increase somebody's user experience. So thank you very much, David. <laughs> So thank you very much, David. Next is Kusmus. Kusmus? <laughs> um, there's comments in here with his thoughts on this. So uh, I gave this whole thing an extra twist for a presto change of feel. And to obscure the buns sliding over, I didn't like the ones just fading. I agree. I didn't like that either. So I just wanted to twist in the opposite direction and translate it up to the other one. And he synced up the animation times on everything with the transitions and gave it a bit of a bounce. That's pretty much the type of thing I was expecting to see a whole bunch of. I thought everybody was going to do this, and I think it's a lot of fun. It's the type of thing you'd see on an actual site. It's a little bit similar to an earlier one we saw where they're lining up the two lines uh, with each other. But, man, it's so nice and clean. I love just little things like that. And this is why it's nice to be able to build out your own thing like this and be able to control it because you can play around with the animation speeds, play around with it a little bit, clean it up, and just make something that's super functional on an actual production website without that much work and you know so little on the HTML side. So really nice and clean, nice stuff, Kusmus. Kusmus? Kusmus, maybe? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, next up here by Sumia De. Sumia De? Sumia De. Um, oh, he moved. Yes, I remember this. He had left his comment saying this is for people with big screens, uh, you know, big cell phones. So he moved it down to the bottom here. Uh, oh, another little arrow one as well. So you can see he played around with the sizes just instead of your typical hamburger, which is quite common to see these days. People play with that a little bit just to make it look not so boring or ordinary or the same as everyone else, but it's still obvious what it is. And a nice little transition where it turns into the arrow and back. And it's down at the bottom just for people with big hands. This could be something where you have a media query. Uh, well, because uh, my one worry is people are so used to seeing things at the top of the screen for navigation on websites. These days with mobile apps, stuff at the bottom is becoming super standard for this exact reason. Um, I don't, I haven't really started seeing websites that have navigations near the bottom yet, but it, you know, it could be something that is going to become a thing. I'm not sure yet. It's a really, that's one of the places where there's a bit of a distinction right now between websites and mobile apps. Thank you very much for that. Nice and clean. Also, Sumia Day. Really good job. Kale M. Elmdal. Emdal, I hope I got you right there. Um, so another one where it looks a little bit different. I'd say it's a little bit oversized maybe, but it still looks cool. I like that. I like that there's a little hover animation where it grows back out so we know we can interact. Ooh, and that's nice. I love that little crossing effect. Whew. Ah, that's fun. That's cool. I just realized that I forgot to look a little bit more detail on the arrow or on something. I said I was going to look at something on one of the other ones in more detail, and I think I forgot it. Sorry about that, but... Um, I really like that crossing animation. I think it would be really fun. I see we had to do a bit more um, HTML for this. I don't know if we needed all that. Oh, for the link animation. 
Oh, look at that. I didn't even notice that. I was too busy looking at this fun thing. And then you get the do-do-do-do. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love things like that. That is a really nice touch. Um, where it just sort of adds in that next step. So not only does it slide out, but then you get this do-do-do-do-do. Um, but the one thing I'd like to see is when we... Like there, it's such a nice transition in that way. And then it sort of just goes back to the three lines. Um, I'm wondering if there'd be a way to animate that backwards. But overall, I think that's a really fun and nice solution. I really like the that coming in like that. I think it looks really good. Really nice stuff. Sumya Day. Next up, we have Kale. Oh, sorry. That wasn't Sumya Day. That was Kale. Cal? Cal M. Dale. Next up. Here I have Sasha. I'm going to say Sasha because the name I had from Twitter was, I, I'm, I'm going to I say the wrong language. So I'm not going to say the language and offend somebody. So I'm going to go with Sasha on this because I couldn't even read the name I got off Twitter. Um, and just look at that nice, subtle, simple animation. Uh, so we'll go on to the next one, which is by uh, Stephen Hall. Here is Steve. Uh, yeah, Steve Hall. Um, so Steve Hall put this one together. Whoa, look at that. So much fun. Woohoo! <laughs> I love that. Uh, once again, just playing around, I'm guessing with some transitions and translates and... Oh, so yeah, the, that makes sense. And are we doing some keyframes, span close, and then some keyframes, the span. So we have it going one way and then the other way. And oh, that works so good. It's one of those fun little animations that's really cool. Um, it's sort of going outside the box. Maybe I'd have it stop right before that, but I'm nitpicking a little bit. I think that's a really fun, bouncy, little bit of joy in your life when you see one that looks like that. So really, really cool. Uh, thank you much. Thank you so much for that one, Steve. Really cool. Uh, another Steve. This is Steve Raymond, who, woohoo, another little fun one. <laughs> you Steves are having, oh, cool. <laughs> you guys are having some fun with it. Uh, I'm guessing, once again, it'd be some keyframes that are coming into play. Or is it just transition animation? Transition? No, no keyframes. There must be some delays. Yeah. So this one, instead of using keyframes, just some transition delays going on things to set all that up. <laughs> Very cute and fun and sort of has the hamburger actual look to it there by making the middle one into the orange. Really, really fun. Next up is Chakib. Next up is Chakib and Chakib. There we go. A nice little spinning animation. So you can see it flies in. And this is where you can see like when it's happening, it sort of covers up something that's happening there, uh, which is a really nice, you know, woo, <laughs> that's fun. I think he just added more turns and didn't play with the opacity of mine maybe. Um, so you can sort of see that third one disappearing as the whole thing spins around. And then we have the background changing on here too. But a nice little fun spinny effect. I always enjoy those extra spins and stuff like that. I think it just makes it look a little bit more animated and something extra going on. Uh, as long as you don't overdo it and have it spin like crazy, obviously. Here we have uh, Mohammed. Mohammed did this one uh, with... Uh, oh, I like one thing that's kind of convenient here. Um, I noticed he added a cubic bezier custom property because he reused the cubic bezier multiple times. So by have you know by making it into a custom property, you can cubic beziers are a pain in the butt. It's long values. There's lots of stuff. It's a perfect case, use case to uh, do it. So you can see it sort of pulls back and shoots out, and then pulls back and shoots out. So it's a really fast animation, um, but it gives it this natural look to it just because of the way it bounces and stuff, and the way it slows down. So it keeps this sort of naturalness to it. I like that it looks like it's doing like half a turn, but within that half a turn, it turns into an X and then it turns back here. So really, really fast because of the way the Bezier is set up, but a nice looking, very like bouncy type of animation could definitely have, if you had other things on your site that were reacting in the same way, it would feel so natural uh, and looks really, really good. Really like that one. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Next, Mohammed is Lucas. Uh, I have Luke here, so I'm gonna go with Luke. Uh, <laughs> Uh, two versions. Oh no, did I not get both versions of yours, Luke? Oh, I remember why it says two versions. We click once and we have an X and we close it. And if I click again, it turns into an arrow and I click again. And then, so every second time it's a little bit different. It might confuse people a little bit, but I think it's fun. And, uh, you know, it meant more work for you and more experimentation. That's what this was all about. Uh, so, you know, I'm saying it would confuse people. <laughs> it confused me the first time when I was looking at it. I'm like, oh, it, it, okay, that's cool. And then I clicked again. I was like, wait, did I miss that the first time? And then eventually I looked and he had set up a little extra JavaScript to have it switch between the two of them. Um, so it would be one or the other. And once again, another arrow. So we have the X and the arrow both in one 
uh, little code pen here. A fun little experiment there, and I think it works really, really well. It looks nice and clean. Again, I don't know if I'd want it to do that twice like that necessarily in the real world, but um, I think for something like this, it's perfect. Uh, here we have one from Simone. And, oh, I remember this one. This reminds me of another one uh, we're going to take a look at after too, where I like how it works. This Remember on Katie's, I said it was a square that turned into a circle and back? Like if we just did this and then had it go into that circle that was there, it would work really, really well. Um, I sort of like here that it's keeping this white background, so it just sort of blends into the menu and then it slides back out. If we had no focus ring on it, it would probably look even cleaner and better, but having some sort of focus is really important. Um, but obviously it does give you, you know, the focus can be a little distracting, but having focus is important. Don't turn off focus just because you don't like the look of it. <laughs> so you can see there it is working super good though. Uh, nice and clean. I like that it's lined up perfectly in the middle and then pops right back out. Really fun. Good stuff there, Simone. Really nice. Uh, here we have one from James. It's another hamburger that spins around into a flat hamburger and then back again. So this one is just playing around a bit with border radiuses and the colors. I think. Um, oh, there we go. More custom properties. Thank you. I love seeing you guys using custom properties. This always makes me so happy uh, to see. And yeah, here we go. Playing with border radius. Oh, and look at this, the border radius with the slash thing. And I always forget how that works. Um, I, I always do border radius like this, but you're going to see it's going to completely change the look of that because uh, it's doing like the four. Anyway, uh, the slash changes the radius of the corner itself. So we have like a 5%, but the 50% changes the radii. I always get a little confused by this. I almost never see it in action. James, this is so cool. I'm going to have to dive into this a little bit more. Maybe I'll even do a video looking at border radius because um, you never see the, it used with the slash here. I do. I know I've seen it. I know sort of what it does, but it always confuses me when I'm playing around with it. Um, so example, if I change this to like a 5%, you're not going to see a big change happen. Or if I change it up to 100, now maybe we will more. Uh, one second. Let's just make this 100%. It's going to make it into like the oval and then let's change this to 50%. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I think this is like the, I'm going to use the wrong terminology, but basically it's instead of it's a hundred percent, but of like starting at 50%, I think is how it's working, but don't quote me on this. Um, it's one of those things that I never use and I don't necessarily know how it works exactly, but it's super cool and it worked super good in this example. So it's something I'm going to have to look at in more detail for sure. Um, and I'll come back with another video on this. I have to remember after this to do it. So that's so cool, James. Uh, you got me a little excited with that. <laughs> so nice uh, also hamburger right there. So looking really good. Thank you very much. All right. Um, now we actually have a few that are not part of the official challenge, but they were fun. I want to look at them anyway. Uh, these first two are by Kyle Shook, who challenged himself, not, realize, not realizing I had a challenge going uh, where he was building out a whole bunch. And he linked specifically to these two to me just to sort of highlight it. And I said, hey, why not? Um, so you can see here what he's done um, playing around. I just wanted to highlight, say, like, this is really cool. Uh, he happened to be doing his own challenge and they're so fun. And it really is. He's like pushing the envelope a little bit here on the stuff we can do with our hamburgers um, that I think is really, really neat. Obviously a little bit different from what we were looking at. Um, he has it with three lines, but again, I think we could do it very similar to what, um, you know, he has his three lines, unless he was using some pseudo elements, which he is. So, um, you know, he's getting some extra stuff by having three lines instead of just having the one. Uh, did you have the same here? Does he have, yeah, he has the four lines. Well, four lines, obviously you do need more than one with two pseudo elements. Um, but still, you can see some really fun creative stuff. The link to these are both in the description, uh, just like every other one of them. So if you want to see how he did them, you can dive into there. And this one by Amit, um, because he had created this before the challenge. But some of them I really like. <laughs> like, look how much fun that is. And we're just going to look at all of them really quickly. I'm not going to dive into how we did all of them. That one's a nice, really simple one. Uh, they're also a nice little simple one. Does that animation change a little? No, it's always the same. Uh, so there we, you know, but these fun little multi-step animations um, are always fun. It gives a little bit of joy to me. And this last one's really cool. Whew. So cool. <laughs> I really, really like it. So thank you so much, uh, Amit, for sharing those. Again, the link for this one is down in the description below so you can check it out. Thank you, everybody. That was a, a lot of submissions. Holy cow. Thank you very much to everybody who submitted. Thank you to... 
And if you didn't submit, you can still put them up. I'll still check them out. Hit me up on Twitter if you want to try it out and uh, get some feedback from me, but I won't be doing another video on them. Thank you very much to everyone who did. You guys are absolutely amazing. If you've watched this whole thing and you're still watching it now and you haven't yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corn on the internet just a little bit more awesome.